All right, YouTube fire engine modelers, welcome back. What we're going to do today on the channel is we're going to make a quick video on how to make a roto ray for your emergency emergency vehicles. Okay? Just like on the front of this one. And we're going to make that out of some very common materials that you can find at any office depot, uh, probably any Walmart, whatever. But this is going to be the outcome, okay? There is some uh, paint time and some uh, monotile chrome pen drying time that's involved in this, but it, it really doesn't take long. And what we're gonna need for this, a pair of pliers, a sanding stick or two. Good old cheap testers orange tube glue. And a razor saw. You're also going to need four push pins, okay? This is just a standard clear push pin that you can find at like I said, any Office Depot, uh, probably Walmart. You could probably find them at Hobby Lobby, whatever. And then one for our, our base. Uh, I apologize. We're also going to need a pair of nippers, okay? So, first things first. We want to create our three lights right here. That's going to come from these three push pins. So you're going to grab it, the large side, in your pliers, lay it on the table, bring your razor saw just to the back of the top of the push pin and saw that guy off. We have to do that for all three of them. Now the Roto Ray was first introduced back in, a, in the 1920s, I do believe, from a company here in Ohio that was called Buckeye Roto Ray. It was a revolving, spinning emergency light that propelled light forward in a whirling fashion. And they're, they're making a comeback nowadays on most new fire apparatus. I'm sure you guys have seen them. Okay, so we have our, our three lenses cut out. So now we need to work on our base. So we're gonna take our nippers and we're we're just going to we're just going to cut a section of that off. Doesn't matter if it's too long, you can sand it down. If it's not long enough, just get a another push pin and recut it. All right, we've cut this. Our edge is a little jagged. So let's take our sanding stick try to sand this down nice and flat. Okay, it doesn't take much. We'll take our finer grit sanding stick, go back over that. Kind of polish that down a little bit so it's nice and smooth. So when we chrome it, it doesn't look gaudy. So you're gonna take Each one of your three bulbs that you just cut, the edge that you just sawed off, lay it on your sanding stick, lay a finger on it, and just real gent gentle pressure, start sanding it back and forth a little bit. I barely put any pressure on that. All I wanna do is get rid of 
the saw marks on it because that's that's going to be the back side of it anyway so we're not not too concerned with the way it looks we just want it somewhat smooth but your your outside top edge that we didn't we didn't cut on that's going to be our lens side all right so we have all three of those done now the next step is we need to get those attached to this so you're going to take one of the bulbs on your sanding stick I like to take three little passes and just add a very, very minute flat spot on it. And take a little bit of the tester's orange glue, stick it on there. Then you're going to take your base and set it on there. Doesn't matter where. Everything's round. We'll work on getting everything symmetrical here shortly. But one thing you do want to worry about is you want this light that we just stuck on there to be perpendicular to the front, okay? You want to look at it from all sides. You see this one's a little crooked. So we want to straighten that up. There we go. Now we need to do that two more times. Now the reason why I'm using the tester's tube glue is it's, it's sticky and tacky enough for this to hold on, yet give you the ability to move them around if, if you need to. So we'll just take the second one, stick it on there. We need to try to line it up this way and this way. Remember, you want everything to be facing forward and to be in line with each other. And we've got two on there now. Now let's do our third one. Just a couple quick little strokes on the sanding stick. Just an ever so slight dab of the tester's orange glue. The third one put down here on the bottom. Okay, now we gotta work on it get them lined up you want them as straight to each other as you can front to back like I said that's why I use the orange tube glue because they do it allows you the ability to move them around a little bit okay that is fairly symmetrical if it wasn't, you could just move them any way you wanted to. And once we have those on there, I always hit them with just a drop of, to me, extra thin right there where they're joined together. Now let that set for a few seconds. And you'll see maybe, maybe they may have moved from the weight of it being turned upside down or whatever. But you want to line them back up. This is probably the, the most important part of this is getting, getting these things perpendicular, lined up left to right and straight. They need to be straight or they won't look right. Okay, well, that's pretty close. So we're going to let this set up for a little bit and we'll come back and start adding some uh, 
chrome pin to it. We'll be right back. All right, here we are back. As you can see, I'm applying some Molotile Chrome. I just dumped a little bit out here on my table, applying it with a brush. Make sure to go in between all the lights out here in front. Make sure you get them all, all the way around. Then you want to do the back side. If you put this Molotov on with a, with a brush, put it on kind of heavy, it will retain a very nice shine. And it'll look good. It will take a couple days, you know, to harden up, to dry. But the key to it is you can't, uh, you can't over, over brush it. All right, so now we need to do the edges of the lights. So just hit the edges ever so slightly all the way around. I am doing this rather quick for the video. Uh, if I was making this for one of my models at the point where I had everything glued together, I would probably let that set for at least a day before I started doing this. Okay, there we are. We have our chrome on. All chromed up and we still maintained our three clear lenses so let me take a second clean this mess up and we'll be right back all right we got all that cleaned up a little bit of alcohol is all you need to clean up this Molotov pen and what I like to do with a lot of it is I unscrew the top of the pen and I'll just dab a little bit out on the, on the table when I brush as, as opposed to using it from the pen itself. Either way works good, but you can see the tight areas that we're in, so it just works better to go ahead and brush it on. All right, so let's do a quick comparison. Here's a painted version. Here's a non-painted. All right. Pretty much the same. So now let's add some color to this bad boy. Let's do... Uh, let's do some red. Let's do some green. And why not, for grins and giggles, let's do yellow or orange. Give that a little shake, open it up. And you're gonna go in here very carefully. And all you wanna do is hit the top. You wanna be careful around the edges. And again, with the Tamiya Clear Paint, you want to make sure you minimize your brush strokes on it. Even though it's kind of self-leveling, if you dab it on there and let it set, it will give the effect of a piece of glass when it's dry. Quick little cleanup. Close this guy up. Give her a green a shake here. I have done a couple of these in green. This would be something that would be popular in 
the Chicago land area, I guess, or if you're building a model for some type of Christmas display, whatever. Pull that paint right down on there. There we go. Our red and our green. And close that back up. And why not? We got red, green, and right now we have clear. Kind of looks like a traffic signal right now. Which this will just add to it. Let's go ahead and do this third one in orange. Same thing, just dab it on, be very careful on the sides. And there you have one quick, simple roto ray made from four push pins that will go on your. You can put them on a vintage fire truck model if you're building a vintage one. You can put it on a modern engine if you're building one. And the reason why we left the uh, the metal rod on the back of that is you can drill a small hole in your model, clip that clip that steel piece off a little bit. And it gives you a location point, you know, all right, already built in. All you have to do is drill a hole and stick it in, which is exactly, it's exactly what I did with this one that actually has the, the pin still in it. And I just drilled a small hole. Once I had it painted, I stuck it right in there. It gave me a location. You just put a dab of super glue on that and it's set. So there you go. If I can get in the camera here, there you go. There's your quick, basic 10, 12 minute roto ray. Now I would say let this set for three or four days, just set it somewhere just like that let it dry don't touch it the testers orange glue the to my extra thin it will dry up it will hold them but they they will snap I, i'm not real sure what kind of material these push pins are made out of but you know you they are you can handle them they are touchable, just like with any other model part. You you have to be careful with it. But that's a uh, that's a red array. I hope you guys uh, give it a shot. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe our channel if you like. I mean, we've made we've made some pretty cool some pretty cool looking emergency lights over the last week or so. Uh, we've been vastly improved some of them. Remember our Twin Sonic that we improved on? We've made uh, we've made a Model 17 Beacon Ray. We've made a couple uh, 174s, but it gives your uh, gives your emergency vehicle an extra little pop. Okay, so thanks again. Appreciate you watching. Like I said, please uh, like, share, and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And uh, we're going to be getting back on the uh, on the old Dodge here shortly and uh, doing some more work to him. I like to get outside and get some, some paint work done on it, but I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But that's, that's where we're at. All right. Thanks, guys.